Selamat pagi, Ibu Gagana. Selamat pagi, Bapak. Aduh, senang. Selamat pagi. Selamat pagi, Selamat pagi. senang sekali bisa pagi, Ibu dan teman-teman semua. Maaf, saya Selamat sebentar. pagi, Pak Konjen, Mbak Gana. Selamat pagi, Pak Risa. Bapak Konjen, Bapak Konjen, Pak Acep, ini ada narasumber kita, Greg Jaden. Ini dari California, Pak. Greg Jaden. Nice to meet you. I changed my grid so I can see everybody. I got the camera to work. We're all good. <laughs> I'm using. I'm not in my office today. Normally, I have a nice background, but because it's, I live on the top floor. My neighbor underneath get mad if they hear me. Boom, 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 wow, and blah, so blah, blah. beautiful. Because <laughs> it's is late here, so I'm like it's like late at night. Jadi ini Greg ini suka uh, berkelana di Indonesia, Bapak. Supaya nanti teman-teman Indonesia semakin mencintai Indonesia, Bapak. Ya. Nah, kebetulan Pak Konjen, kita kerjasama dengan Universitas PGRI Semarang. Supaya mahasiswa bahasa Inggris semakin terlatih bahasanya dan bermimpi untuk keliling dunia, termasuk keliling Indonesia. Bukan begitu Pak Nur Hidayat? Pak Nur Hidayat, ini ada Bapak Konjen. Oh. Bapak Acep Mantri dari Frankfurt. Selamat sore Pak Acep. Selamat sore Pak Nur Hidayat, senang sekali bisa ketemu Bapak. Saya juga senang ketemu Bapak Ania. Dan ada Mbak Risa dari bagian Pensos Boot. Dr. Nur Hidayat ini adalah ketua dari International Office Bukis. Karena kita akan mulai, mohon semua audio segera dimatikan di bagian kiri, bagian bawah. Ini tolong dimatikan. Uh, supaya kita tidak ada noise kecuali uh, saya dan Bapak Kemudian kita mulai Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Salam sejahtera untuk semua yang hadir di sini Saya terima kasih sekali bahwa Bapak Konjen Bapak Acep Sumantri berkenan hadir untuk memberikan sambutan termasuk staff dan dari I.O. Ubus Semarang, termasuk Kompasianer dan Traveler dari komunitas Traveler Kompasiana. Saya Gaya Sukman, I would like to say good morning to everyone. Thanks for coming to join our Zoom today with Greg Jaden. And um, first of all, I would like to invite Pak Acep Sumantri to uh, say something as a welcome to everyone. Including Greg Jaden, isn't it uh, the speaker? And time is yours. Silahkan Bapak Acep Sumantri untuk menyampaikan sambutan pada acara uh, Zoom ke-16 dari komunitas traveler Kompasiana hari ini. Monggo Bapak. Baik, terima kasih Ibu Gagana Stegman. Thank you Ibu Gagana, Ibu Gagana Stegman, uh, Mr. Greg Jaden, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, selamat pagi di Jerman dan selamat sore di Indonesia. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera untuk kita semua. Uh, first of all, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to Ibu Gana Stegman for inviting me to deliver short remarks in this webinar on wonderful Indonesia, Greg's journey on how you can earn money from your photos. Organized by Koteka, Komunitas Traveler Kompasiana, and Universitas Pegeri Semarang. It's a great honor for me to speak among the Komunitas Traveler, as I also recognize myself as a traveler, because as Indonesian diplomat since 1995, I have been traveling to many countries in the world and many provinces in Indonesia. Currently, I have been signed by the government of Indonesia as the Consul General of the Republic of Indonesia in Frankfurt, Germany. It also covers the region where Ibugana Stegman and family lives in beautiful city of Seitingen. Uh, distinguished participant, uh, as all of you may have known, this year is not a particularly good year for the tourism industry. The tourism industry is one of the most suffered sectors during the pandemic as many countries were forced to close their borders and people are restricted from travels due to global health concern. Indonesia is not an exception of this uh, pandemic situation. COVID-19 in Indonesia today has reached more than uh, 605,000 confirmed cases 
And from this number, around 97,000 patients, or around 82.1% have recovered. Meanwhile, uh, total death from COVID-19 in Indonesia is uh, around 18,500 cases, or 3.1% uh, from total uh, contact cases. Until now, Indonesia restricted foreign visitors from entering uh, the territory of Indonesia for laser purposes, including for tourism. Uh, this regulation must be taken to mitigate the, the infection of COVID-19 in Indonesia. The impact on quite massive for our tourism industry, especially for our world-known destination, Bali Island whose people rely heavily on the tourism industry for their income. However, we have implemented some actions during this uh, dormant period. Indonesia have been promoting tourism through our embassies, uh, consulate general and representative abroad, through events with tour operators, uh, through social media, newsletter, and other type of prom promotion, even in the difficult times of pandemic. With our tagline, dream now, travel later. We want to show the world that the beautiful destination Indonesia are still there. And now preparing itself, ourselves to be safe a travel destination for all with health protocol practice in all aspects of tourism experience. Hopefully through this event, this webinar, we can refresh our memories of all the good times we had in Indonesia's tourist destination for, and for all of you who have uh, been there, of course. And for all of you, everyone who haven't, I hope this event, this event will encourage you to travel to Indonesia and explore its exotic and wonderful destination. Oh my God. Let us go and travel later when the situation permits. I wish you a successful discussion. Finally, I would like to use this opportunity to thank Koteka and Universitas PGRI Semarang for organ organizing this uh, very important event. I also would like to thank Mr. Greg for promoting Indonesia through his photos and hope could continue to do so. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Pa Acep Sumantri, atas samutannya. Thank you very much for your speech. And uh, I heard that yesterday or the day before you have celebrate your birthday. So I think it's better for us to sing a birthday song together. Greg, can you help me? Thank we you can sing well. one together. And Mas Oni, can you sing also? Yeah. Mas Oni? Yes. Okay, can we sing together for Ba Acep? <laughs> okay. 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 One, two, three. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Did you guys sing in English? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Selamat ulang tahun Bapak. Tetap sehat. Hari ini 21 years old now. Kembali beraktivitas dan kami mengingatkan <laughs> Bapak untuk uh, meninggalkan ruangan karena Bapak masih ada acara Zoom berikutnya. Semoga Bapak uh, malam minggunya sangat menyenangkan hari ini dan salam untuk Ibu Lilis Bapak. Baik Bu, saya sampaikan ya ada acara Ini. juga di sebelah Dharma Wanita. <laughs> Kita akan ketemu. Baik, terima ya, semoga ya. sukses. Terima kasih Bapak. Oke, okay. baik. Uh, kita kembali ke acara Zoom kita kali ini. Saya sudah memper, uh, saya sudah mempersiapkan. Saya sudah mempersiapkan ada Greg Jaden di sini sebagai uh, speaker kita yang akan berbicara banyak tentang wonderful Indonesia, betapa indahnya Indonesia. Untuk teman-teman semuanya saya ingatkan sekali lagi karena banyak yang terlambat. Aduh kalau di Jerman ini sudah disetrap ya. Uh, Sebaiknya kalau sudah masuk segera mematikan audio di bagian bawah kiri langsung saja dimatikan, oke? Okay? Please switch off your microphone because it's difficult to listen someone else speak when you have your microphone on. Mohon teman-teman uh, dimatikan 
mikrofonnya segera begitu masuk ya karena banyak yang terlambat. Ini hari ini sudah ada 20, 42 peserta, masih banyak lagi. Sepertinya yang mendaftar sekitar 58 ya. Baik, oke. Okay. So, good morning, Greg. Morning. Uh, selamat, selamat pagi. Selamat. <laughs> selamat pagi. Ah, nice to see you. Before, Thanks for having uh, me. This is awesome. Okay, good. Before we talk about a wonderful Indonesia and how is your work with photography, I would like to read a bit about you. So people will know uh, what do you do. Everybody can listen. Greg Jaden started out as an ad educator with patient for the creative process. So he is an established photographer, filmmaker, storyteller, and explorer. Greg's ability to capitalize on unforeseen opportunities has helped him work with some of the most prestigious Fortune 500 brands. Okay, after preserving two near-death experiences in 2009 and 2015, he continues to test the boundaries of his creative process by incorporating deeper meaning and spiritual elements into his work. He works closely with organization to protect wildlife, conservation of our oceans, and coaching people in spiritual transformation. Greg has been involved in numerous charities, such as at Lonely Whale, Anthony Robbins Foundation, and volunteer cleanup crews after natural disasters. Clients include extensive experience working with local, such as Disney, Fox, CBS, Technology, Sony, Universal Music, Nokia, Porsche, Lamborghini, so many, uh, Honda, Pepsi, to name a few. So Greg believes artistic expression is one of the greatest form of contribution to our planet. What inspires him most is how photography can transform the ordinary to extraordinary while leaving an impression in people's life. Uh, jadi itu adalah data diri dari Greg, narasumber kita hari ini. Dan Greg memulai karirnya sebagai agen iklan. Kemudian dia menjadi fotografer, pembuat film, storyteller, kemudian juga sebagai penjelajah. Jadi nggak salah kalau dia menjelajah di Indonesia. Kemudian selama ini dia sudah memiliki 500 klien, uh, di antaranya adalah uh, Sony, kemudian Nokia, Porsche, Lamborghini, Honda, Disney, dan lain sebagainya. Nama-nama yang di Indonesia sudah tidak asing lagi. Kemudian eh, yang paling menarik adalah Greg ini pernah hampir meninggal dua kali. Tahun 2019, eh, tahun 2009, dan tahun 2015. Makanya waktu kenalan sama dia ini, saya sempat diterawang. Jadi dia ini punya eh, kekuatan spiritual. Hmm, dia bisa melihat eh, seperti masa depan begitu ya. Dan dia menebak-nebak saya gitu, misalnya dari tanggal lahirnya, dari bintangnya, kemudian dari karakternya, seperti itu ya. Jadi kecelakaan ini justru membuat dia semakin bangkit bahwa apa yang terjadi pada tahun-tahun sebelumnya yang sangat menyeramkan itu justru membuat dia semakin maju dan membuat sebuah apa namanya ya anugerah bahwa dia bisa menjadi seseorang yang uh, bisa melihat sesuatu yang tidak bisa dilihat oleh orang lain. Nanti boleh uh, konsultasi ke dia, dia punya Instagram, dia punya Facebook, atau dia punya um, website ya, dia bisa uh, kalian bisa uh, konsultasi atau berkomunikasi dengan dia. Baik, langsung aja kita ke Greg. Greg, how are you today? What did you do already? I think it's um, 1 p.m. in the morning, very early in the morning in California. Is it warm there? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not bad. It's about 15 degrees Celsius. Okay. It's, it's cool yeah, it's, it's not Bali weather. That's for sure. Okay. <laughs> Sucks. <laughs> I actually have the heater on, but then I got the fan on and then I wear wool. So, cause it's winter here. So I miss your guys' climate. Enjoy your warm weather today everywhere. <laughs> we have snow here. <clears throat> what? Where? Yeah, the top here. of the mountain, the volcanoes? Uh, it's about oh yeah in Germany yeah of course about 700 700 900 Tons of snow <laughs> yeah everywhere is snow it's nice because everything is white it's a little bit cold but something different because I yeah. cannot 
market in Indonesia. I think two weeks ago, we talked about your travel. You were in Canada. So, so how is yeah. it in Canada? Uh, not good. It, uh, I've seen better days. Um, I actually went back for business and um, to clear, I'm originally from there. So uh, I just had some stuff I wanted to do. Um, I went to the mountains, but obviously because of COVID shutdowns, I couldn't go to the Bamp Springs Hotel and a lot of my favorite places. Um, it's not particularly nice to photograph there in November anyway, so it was pretty much just a personal needs trip, unfortunately. And then from Canada, you traveled to California. How is it? Because now it's pandemic, you know, it's it's not <clears throat> common that you, you travel a lot uh, during the pandemic, but you still can do that. Can you tell us yeah. about experience it's uh really nice to pack travel um during this time because the plane has never been cleaner so that's awesome um there's nobody on the plane so you have this whole ginormous plane i have a photo i, I sent for an article i wrote but mm -hmm. i wish i had it and what i should have sent it to you but the plane's practically empty so it's nice there's the airports aren't crowded there's no people everywhere i mean it's actually so relaxing to travel it's like you just put your headphones on and it's fun you need to make the test because of the COVID 19. no test um so basically when i went to canada i was quarantined for two weeks mm -hmm. um but they were really lenient on the rule because if you have no symptoms you're allowed to go to appointments like chiropractor or physiotherapy and stuff so I just went to my chiropractor like four or five times and stayed home. It's cold out anyways, so there's nowhere to go. <laughs> and then you just order food in. So once you're done the two weeks, it becomes normal. Um, just wear a mask when you go out. But um, yeah, no, it's fine. It's actually, once you're done, the two weeks goes by really fast. And then coming back, uh, there's no quarantine. There's nothing. Jadi Greg ini adalah asli Kanada, kemudian pindah ke California. Beberapa minggu yang lalu dia mengadakan perjalanan dari Kanada ke California. Ternyata tidak ada eh, apa namanya ya aturan bahwa untuk terbang dari Kanada ke California, dari Kanada ke Amerika harus menyertakan eh, surat seperti yang terjadi di Indonesia ataupun di Jerman. Karena kalau di sini misalnya di Indonesia mau ke Indo, ke Jerman, ke Indonesia, Indonesia ke Jerman harus punya suratnya. Dia hanya me, uh, mengalami 14 hari karantina saja. I heard you plan to go to Indonesia soon. Can you tell yeah, me that? I do. Uh, actually I I'm, I'm dying to go. I wish I could work with the tourism board. I would have already come. Um, okay. I actually was just looking into flights before this call. So um, I'm planning on doing a documentary of um, some of the almost extinct animals and some of the tribes there. I want to visit um, some of those tribes in the villages and incorporate them into a kind of a, a, a spiritual story, but involving, you know, the condition of the planet, um, deforestation, things that obviously might be okay around the rest of the world. But um, when the land is sacred, then there's a lot of good stories to be told so i'm hoping to come if if everything goes good i can come at the end of this month if not it might be early january but uh, i'm definitely ready to come back uh, you told me that you will go to kalimantan anyway for for the daya community there yeah yeah right. that's that's high on the priority list so um, <clears throat> I'm pretty good with indigenous communities and I, I like to go back to the roots of humanity and the roots of spirituality. So I'm super stoked. I'm totally excited to go back and visit and um, just, you know, live off the land, get off the grid, um, just enjoy life, enjoy food, enjoy water, um, enjoy rituals and just kind of learn a lot about their culture and also what, how important the land and animals and things are to them so it's going to be interesting but yeah it's on the list why indonesia greg because you have been in hong kong vietnam in any other any other sure. asian countries but why indonesia um well you guys have so many islands i have to keep coming back to see them all <laughs> so <laughs> it's your fault <laughs> No, really, it's, it's, hey. <laughs> it's Indonesia's fault. Too many islands. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. So it's, just, it's, it's so amazing because, you know, you can go to an island and, and go to this amazing waterfall and get these beautiful landscape pictures. I just feel like when I'm in Indonesia, I'm 
submersed in nature. Okay. Like I'm surrounded by it, I'm submersed in it. I usually go to the traditional areas, um, traditional Muslim villages, traditional, I'm, I'm making a lot of friends there. So when I go, for me, I like it because I eat the traditional food. So I love the food and I love the people. Um, so I feel at home there all the time. And so each island is so diverse. It's so exciting to get off a plane, you know, set up my day the next day. And then I go to these places and they're just fascinating. You know, the waterfalls alone are just amazing. And um, temples, people, food, regions. Um, yeah, so I just, there's just so much to see there. And it's just such a beautiful country that I have no problems coming back all the time. <laughs> okay, but Thailand is also beautiful, you know. Yeah, Thailand is really nice. I didn't, I only spent two weeks in Thailand. So I, I kind of went to like Phuket and stuff and I took a boat around and flew my drone, but um, there's a lot of partying that goes on there. So I'm not into the party scenes. So um, I kind of want to head to the North of Thailand. It's just so hard. Like I, I guess for me, one is uh, warm culture. I always <laughs> love warm culture. And then two, I had to have been Indonesian or something in my past life because when I go there, it just, I end up making friends, even though we don't speak the language and stuff, I just somehow have a way to start understanding it and, and just being part of the culture. So I'm definitely not like your regular, like boule that comes and, you know, it's like, whatever, what about me? Like, it's, it's not even a, a case of that. It, it's just a, I don't know. I just, I, I love it. I love the culture. There's so many aspects of that place. That's just amazing. And it's got a strong spiritual presence. So it's probably what draws me. You have to learn Bahasa Indonesia, correct? <laughs> I do. I do. I pick it up more. It's been a year. You know, last year I was like, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. But then, then a, a year goes by and I don't practice okay. it because I've been over here. Okay, we can continue. Okay. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> sure, why not? Okay. Um, Terima kasih. Okay, teman-teman semuanya, jadi uh, Gerek ini sudah berkeliling di negara-negara Asia seperti di Cina, di Hong Kong, kemudian di Thailand, dan di Vietnam. Tapi ternyata Indonesia ini menjadi salah satu favorit dia karena ada sesuatu yang sangat berbeda dibandingkan dengan negara Asia yang lain, yaitu karakter dari orangnya. Jadi ketika dia ada di Indonesia, dia tidak akan gabung dengan para bule untuk jalan-jalan, tapi kumpul dengan orang kampung atau dengan masyarakat lokal. Karena ini akan membuatnya menjadi seperti memiliki kebersamaan yang berbeda yang tidak akan pernah dia dapatkan. Kemudian um, sebentar lagi dia akan katanya dia akan ke Kalimantan mau uh, ke suku Daya karena di di suku ini pasti ada sesuatu yang sangat spesial yang tidak ada di negara lain atau di uh, di tempat yang akan dia kunjungi di negara lain. I think we need also to talk about the photography as a business because you don't just go there and make photos and enjoy uh, the food, the people, you know, the spicy food and talking with people and going around, enjoy it, meditation. So you make pictures and um, you make this as a business. So uh, can you tell us about uh, how, how do you do that? How, how can you manage this one? Right, absolutely. Um... So for me, it all started about five years ago. Um, I had a dog that died and I used to take, go to nature all the time with my dog. So after she passed away, I needed something to do. So I picked up a camera and I started just shooting. Um, so I started going to the mountains in Canada, all my favorite places. And uh, I just started posting all my stuff online. And as I kept posting more and more, my photos started getting better and better. My first photos weren't, weren't that good. <laughs> They were like, you know, right, you go out for a day and you shoot. Used the yeah. camera? What was your first camera? Uh, I was a, I, I bought a Canon 5D Mark III. Oh, okay. That was my first camera. And that was my only camera. And and the reason why I did is because I used to work at Canon years ago. So I thought, well, they, they got to have good cameras. So that was the first camera. But um, I just started doing it for fun. And then I realized this is something that I love and I want to continue. And then through um so what i did was i start i'm i'm a marketing professional so i started contacting brands to see if i could work with them and then i would pitch them um ideas and i would pitch them concepts and i would say hey your brand could use this uh how about i i go on this trip um to vietnam and i i photograph all these assets for you 
And then mm-hmm. that way I could raise money for my travel, but then also make money so I could, I could create a living. So that's how it really started for me. Um, and then I just kept growing it into a, a, a viable business. And so I just, you get referrals and you keep working with brands and it just becomes this, now it's, it's like a way of life and a business. So I guess it's the, the good thing is, is it gives, I, I'm able to do what I love and I'm able to go to the places. I have a lot of control where I decide to go, depending on the project. And then I can kind of incorporate that and then, you know, have a living at it. So super exciting. Um, couldn't be more thankful. Uh, jadi dia memulai... Uh, fotografi ini sejak lima tahun yang lalu. Jadi belum lama ya sebenarnya, tapi dia sekarang sudah menjadi fotografer uh, dunia, filmmaker dunia, dan ini hanya dimulai dari ketika uh, anjingnya itu meninggal. Jadi dia suka foto-foto anjingnya, dan waktu itu kalau nggak salah kameranya tuh Canon 5D deh. Dan setelah itu uh, dia mengembangkan bakat ini karena ternyata fotonya bagus ya, ya dari foto anjing tadi. Oke, okay, Greg, so how um, did you find your first until the 500 brands as your clients. How did you do that? Oh, those, okay. That? So um, I used to work with them when I did my marketing business anyway. So it was bizarre. I had all these contacts. So what I did was I reached out to them. But with photography, I chose brands that I, not necessarily those ones, like I chose brands that that the, the deliverables and the assets that I would capture with my camera would fit their brand so they could use them because that's the only way they're going to hire you. So um, I just chose brands that 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 liked that rugged nature environment because I like the exercise and hiking anyways. And then I hope to go to these places. It's kind of nerve wracking because you, you only have one chance to get the shot and then you come away and you hope you got the shot for these brands So because they're paying you. Um, so I just would pick brands like that that liked that you know they were related to that whether it be like photography bags um uh digital storage was another good one um anything that clothing like that outdoor rugged clothing um anything to do with outdoors products and something to do with camping and stuff usually those brands like to work with us so that just made it made it just an easy fit Do you have any problem with uh, your clients or everything is just like 100% perfect No, it's never perfect. <laughs> I wish. No, <laughs> In a so dream cool. world, it's perfect. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, so there's always things that go wrong. Um, sometimes like, and I notice with travel photography, you have to book mm-hmm. enough time to get the assets because if you don't get them, you have to go back and get them. So a lot of things can go wrong, like weather. It can rain, it can snow, it can blizzard, it can have an earthquake. When I, for, uh, I think it was one of my trips to, One of my trips to Indonesia I kept having earthquakes. All the islands, they were like moving for like every two days. It was like an earthquake. So it's kind of makes you nervous. Um, volcano eruptions, a lot of stuff can affect it. So you have this plan in your mind and you're like, I'm going to go get all these assets for you. And you've sold the client, but then all of a sudden you have to have backup plans if you can't go to these locations for whatever reason. So um, no, you're, it's a constant juggling act of trying to, make sure you get the proper assets for the client and also you you want to be able to like make sure that they buy into it you might show them some some samples of assets and and send them over by email and they might go yeah can you go get me something else (laughs) and you're like okay yeah well the budget just went up but of course there's there's plenty of islands so let's go get more assets but yeah there's always challenges and there could be your camera could break could be anything I've been placed actually Borobudur. Is that how you say it? Borobudur. Borobudur. I can't <laughs> roll my R's. I'm terrible. So Borobudur. And my tripod, I exactly. was using like it broke on me. So mm-hmm. here I am. Sunset's beautiful. The model's position. All the stuff's like perfect. And my tripod's busting. So quickly I had to go put my camera somewhere on one of the rocks to get the picture because mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like that can happen and then i'm in the middle of these like where am i going to go get a new tripod right away so that was before i was sponsored um by a, a brand but uh back then that was when i first started i kind of bought a lot of the gear so as i was getting going i didn't think it would break and so one of the knobs like it screwed too tight i guess i screwed it in too tight and when i tried to undo it i couldn't undo it 
So yeah, I run into equipment problems. There's weather problems. There's a lot of challenges with it. You know, even though you look at the Instagram and it looks beautiful and it looks fun and it looks like every day is fun, you could get a hike for four hours, go to a waterfall. And uh, actually one of the waterfalls, the sun was out and the sun was like blaring and it was just making the picture look terrible. And the, the, the film was looking awful. So I just sat and I, this is honestly, I, you, but so like the people that took me were laughing because I was praying. I'm like, please, I need clouds and clouds. And you can see the clouds, but then the sun's here and the clouds are way over there. And then the clouds are moving because you want that covered. So you want it to block and diffuse that sunlight so you get much better light. Mm -hmm. If you've ever tried to take a picture in bright sunlight, it looks terrible. My only day I could go there and I just spent four hours to hike there. So that was kind of funny because... So what I had to do is I had to wait, wait, wait until the sun went over the, the cliff and then it just darkened. So then I had a quick 10, 20 minutes just to shoot because then, then there wasn't enough light. So yeah, there's a lot that can go wrong. Jadi teman-teman, dia ini uh, punya banyak klien kan? Tadi saya menyebut, uh, menyebutnya adalah 500 klien. Nah, untuk mendapatkan klien ini tentu saja tidak mudah. Katanya dia tidak bisa sempurna ya untuk memuaskan mereka semua ini. Tapi dia hanya tahu bahwa kalau dia punya foto, dia punya barang yang akan ditawarkan, itu harus sesuai dengan brandnya. Ini fotonya harus tepat dengan uh, Nokia misalnya, terus foto B dengan Sony misalnya. Kemudian uh, dia bilang satu tips bagi fotografer ketika akan membuat foto adalah momen yang tepat. Jadi kalau misalnya ada oh ada awan, ada matahari, ini saat yang tepat bagaimana pencahayaannya supaya fotonya jadi bagus, jadi posisinya di mana, terus jamnya berapa, begitu ya. Can I ask you something, Greg? Um, can you mention how much you get for one photo, for example? So my answer to this always, I get asked this a lot. So you can do a couple things with photos. One, you could try to sell it online on your website. And it depends on your license. So really it depends on two things. One, how good is the photo and how rare is it? Because okay. there's a lot of photography databases where you can buy pretty decent photos of it and okay. they'll use that. But so anywhere from 500 US dollars to 2000 and it also depends on the distribution so if it's a national campaign and it's okay. a recurring campaign you can negotiate that up to 10 15,000 it depends how good it is okay so it really really depends on the photo and if the photo is average you're not going to get very much at all okay. you're lucky if you get anything yeah what about a charity <clears throat> or charity do you also have price for that or just make it for free uh charities just donate i just do it for free okay. Sure. Yeah, like one, there was a flood that came through Calgary and I just donated my time and just went and photographed it and provided the assets and, and just told the story. Um, anytime we do charity, it's always a good healthy balance to just do the charity. I don't really expect to get paid for charity because uh, the money always comes back some other way. And that's, uh, you know, that's business. You have to trade charity. Mm -hmm. You can't always be like pushing for the dollar. Tadi sempat tanya ya, saya pengen tahu karena dia ini kan kelasnya kelas dunia, kalau dia menjual satu foto itu harganya berapa? Dia menyebut angka 500 sampai dengan 2000 dolar Amerika, kemudian untuk kampanye yang besar dari brand yang besar pula, biasanya di atas 10 ribu dolar Amerika. Waduh, bisa beli mobil, bisa beli rumah ya. Um, tetapi tentu saja ini tergantung dengan kualitas dari foto yang dia tawarkan atau dia hasilkan. Jadi kalau fotonya bagus pasti harganya juga bagus. I think you 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 used also drone right to to make pictures and videos around the world, especially in Indonesia. Can you tell us about this? When I first started traveling there. Drone wasn't a problem. They were pretty new and not a lot of people over there had them. So we could drone anywhere. Um, there was. What's the temple? You know the temple with the gates where everybody gets that famous picture? They have the two gates and there's like a line of people and everyone just goes and gets that picture. Anyways, we'll come back to that. But um, so one time I was down the hill flying my drone and mm -hmm. and then it it, it kind of went over there. Like I, I didn't realize it was a temple. So I was Somebody flying and I'm like, wow, this is so Boko. cool. Correct? Yeah. Somebody said Candy Ratu Boko, is that right? Ratu Boko? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think that sounds about right. Okay, go ahead. So I'm flying it. So I'm down. I'm down the mountain, but the temple's up up here. So I'm flying okay. it up up top, 
kind of going almost over top of it, but I really wasn't going to because I knew that you shouldn't fly over temples. So I, I was just flying enough to, to snap a couple pictures. And then they sent a guy down on his motorbike and he, he's like, no drone, no drone. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. And then so obviously my translator talked to him and figured it out. And I said, oh, I didn't, I didn't mean any disrespect to go over the temple. I, I wasn't over top of the temple. I just was high enough. They were concerned. So we just pulled the drone back and then left and just went on to something else. But um, usually there's no problems. No one really cares. I think it's just don't fly over the temples is pretty much the common, the common thing that, that now is a problem. Um, but there's no, I don't think I have to look into it this time, but I've never heard anything about a permit. And I've always asked before I go, do I need any paperwork or do I need any, do I have to show my license and stuff? So, you know, I'm really respectful of that. And just make sure you just follow the rules. I don't want to get in any trouble when I'm over there. Jadi teman-teman, uh, selama di Indonesia atau keliling dunia, si Greg ini juga uh, menggunakan drone, jadi uh, yang terbang begitu ya, untuk membuat foto ataupun membuat film. Nah ternyata selama ini dia tidak pernah memiliki uh, satu kesulitan ketika menggunakannya, karena di Jerman sendiri ini sangat tidak boleh, jadi harus punya surat izin bahwa misalnya kalau kita, kita juga punya drone ya, kemudian kita membuat foto rumah kita dari atas itu juga ada izin. Karena tetangga merasa takut ini kita adalah mata-mata. Untuk itu di Indonesia belum ada ketentuan seperti itu, jadi untuk Greg sendiri tidak ada masalah. Hanya satu hal, dia harus memperhatikan ketika menerbangkan drone di atas di atas candi karena biasanya itu adalah sebagai tempat beribadah untuk agama tertentu misalnya kalau candi Borobudur Buddha begitu ya. Is everyone fun? I see a lot of questions. This is awesome. Really yeah. good group. Yeah, you. Uh, the first question is from Pak Sutiono. Hey, Greg doesn't sleep. Ah, oh, okay, because it's now one one two a.m. Early <laughs> Someone morning. asking if I sleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're so I concerned. Yeah, yeah, yes, I, I do sleep actually. So um, just to answer that, that's kind of a funny question, but um, I'm on your guys' time schedule because I've been planning this film that I want to do that everyone I talk to is awake right now. And so I, I usually wake up kind of later and I work afternoon, evening here in the US and then and then I'm, I just stay up and work. So I go to bed about 5 a.m., maybe 6. Totally okay. weird hours. But the beautiful thing when I get there, I just get off the plane and I'm like daytime. So it's normal for me. Oke. Okay. There's no jet lag when I get there. <laughs> Oke, okay, good. Jadi Pak Sutiono, ini biasanya dia kan tidurnya jam 5 pagi. Kenapa? Karena dia saat ini sedang mengerjakan sebuah film di Indonesia di mana kalau kita di Indonesia itu pagi di sana masih eh kalau pokoknya perbedaannya begini deh. Kalau California dengan Indonesia itu 15 jam. Jadi kalau di sana uh, malam di 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 California masih masih pagi ya masih pagi kemudian dibandingkan dengan in, dengan Jerman jadi eh, kalau dari California ke Jerman itu 9 jam ke belakang jadi kita duluan jadi pertama eh, Indonesia dulu baru Jerman kemudian baru baru California jadi seperti itu dan sekarang ini eh, karena eh, para para pekerja atau timnya yang ada di Indonesia ini sedang bekerja jadi otomatis dia harus mengikuti jam kerja dari orang Indonesia meskipun sebenarnya dia harus tidur jadi dia sekarang ini sudah mengalami satu ritmus yang berbeda dengan ritmus yang dia punya sebagai warga negara di California jadi dia hanya tidur jam 5 pagi ini masih jam 1 pagi 44 menit jadi 15 menit kurang jam 2 pagi Kemudian untuk tiga jam lagi dia akan tidur. Johanna Meirina Andino. Hi, I'm from Indonesia and my husband is American. I just want to ask about when will you explore Indonesia again? Yeah, I'm going to try and come in the next two weeks. If I can get out of here in December, if not, it'll probably be January. The problem is finding an airline that actually will get me there. Promise. Okay. I'm, no, I'm dying. I'm, I think about you guys all the time. I want to. I want to come back. Timba Yohana, dia akan uh, segera ke Indonesia dalam waktu dekat, uh, sekitar dua minggu lagi, Desember atau paling lambat Januari. Dari M Rifai Maarif, seberapa besar peluang bisnis fotografi di Indonesia? So Greg, uh, how do you think about photography business in Indonesia? Because you, I believe you met already Indonesian people, photographers, travelers businessman, whatever, whoever. So uh, maybe you can 
say something about that wine? How is the um, the future for for Duke Lafitte? Yeah. Okay. I think there's a lot of opportunity over there. Uh, 100% because one, I actually have some gigs that I will be doing when I come there that are paid jobs. Um, there's a lot of businesses there. And a lot of those businesses are either locally owned or they're foreigner owned. So you have two different opportunities. Traditionally, the foreigners would probably pay a little more for the service. So there's no chance that you can. And also because Indonesia is so beautiful that I know a lot of Indonesian locals that photograph what are you doing it's weird because it, it is beautiful <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I got it I'm like I thought you were telling me to smile oh. <laughs> so yeah so because it's so beautiful you guys are so lucky you've got these waterfalls that are incredible mountains volcanoes you've got bromo you've got clouds over top of bromo like we don't have that here we've got like big cities and then we've got desert and then we've got you know you go north yeah you got mountains it's totally different so there's a huge opportunity because you guys, if you're photographers, can make good money knowing you guys know the places. Like I have to ask, and there's probably people that just don't tell me, I'm always researching the next place to go. So you could approach businesses and brands if you take good photos and good video content, because brands always need content. And right now with COVID, their marketing budgets are smaller. So you have a better opportunity to be able to use your land that you know inside and out and, and offer these amazing opportunities to brands over here in America or even Europe that they don't know. They don't know about it, but they would love to have their product featured, you know, with these beautiful landscapes and fog and low clouds and amazing villages and shots. And like, you have so much diversity there that there are a lot of brands that will look for it. And all you have to do is just do email campaigns, introduce yourself and just fire off an email and be like, you know, I'm a photographer, I'm Indonesian based, but I know all the secret spots. Are you guys interested in working together? Here's my portfolio and be prepared to give them something. So give them your portfolio. And then also say the advantage of working for you or working with you is that you can take them to these amazing places that American and Canadian and Western society and Europeans, they might not know it. So I think you guys have 15,000 islands. I don't even know how there's that many, but there is. 17. And, sorry, 17. See, see, you guys keep going up. I always think it's 12 and 15. Now you've got 17. Maybe you just <laughs> found the other 2,000 and then now it's like 17. You're going to find 1,000 more next year. But there's so much opportunity. And that's everyone over there. You guys are lucky because me, my brand looks at me and goes, okay, well, you need $4,000 just to get you there and get you back. Okay, so there's one cost. Then- uh, you need accommodation. So there's two costs. Now I need domestic flights. There's three costs. Well, with you guys, you already live there. And if you can get to these islands easy by boat or by plane and go and photograph them and give them amazing assets, there's brands that'll work with you for sure. 100%. Yeah. If you, if you guys are, are good and they're, they're always looking for unique content, because for me, I got to get over there. It's, it's, there's, there's a lot more. So already you're ahead of me by 5,000 US dollars because you live there. I have to convince the brand that I'm better than you. <laughs> and then I come there and shoot, 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 and then give them that and sell it. Because that's, that's the reality of business. Mm -hmm. You can probably provide it for a lot less than I can. Peluang besar, uh, peluang bisnis fotografi di Indonesia sendiri sangat besar, khususnya bagi orang sen Indonesia sendiri karena kita kan uh, punya banyak kekayaan alam yang kita tahu. Jadi orang luar negeri bahkan mungkin tidak tahu ya, hanya kita harus uh, apa ya namanya benar-benar memanfaatkannya. Karena kalau orang misalnya di daerah-daerah terpencil misalnya ada kekayaan alam seperti air terjun atau ada gunung atau apa begitu ya, orang luar negeri kan harus jauh datangnya tuh udah pakai uh, pakai pesawat, udah bawa dananya aja banyak begitu kan. Nah itu yang membuat mereka itu menyayangkan mengapa orang lokal sendiri tidak bisa memanfaatkan atau tidak uh, me me memanfaatkan dari peluang bisnis fotografi dari kekayaan alam yang ada di negara kita.